Hey everybody, welcome back. So this is part 10 of the uh, LS Swap into this 1976 C3 Corvette. If this is your first time visiting the channel, go ahead, click on the playlist. It'll get you uh, up to speed as far as everything that's transpired up to this point. Uh, in the last video, we actually uh, uh, placed the engine in the car, got it made it up to the trains, and it's basically mounted to the trans and sitting on the mounts and everything else. So at this point, we're going to be ready uh, to drop the fuel tank and then get the tank out of the car and then install the Holly fuel pump in it which is basically the drop-in uh, unit for the uh, for that car. So with that being said, let's get to work. All right, so we are under the car on the driver's side. And the first thing we need to do is I need to loosen up the mount for the, uh, the muffler. And basically on my car, I'm sure yours is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, there's two muffler hangers on uh, either side and they clamp into the uh, bumper support. So on mine, they're five eighths on either side and we're gonna loosen up the muffler clamps. So when we go ahead and get ready to drop the tank, we can swing the mufflers out of the way. Okay, so we got the, uh, the strap removed off the muffler. So that is nice and loose. And again, the reason why we want that loose on both sides. So when we go ahead and remove the cross member and then we go to drop the tank off, we can pull the mufflers to the side and then the tank will actually drop between the mufflers. All right. So at this point, I'm getting ready to remove the straps. And so they're just held on by a couple bolts. So I'll go ahead and remove those. So we have to remove the cross member, which runs along the front of the tank. And the cross member is held on by two bolts that go into the, uh, the frame. And what you want to do is so what you want to do is stick a 9 16 wrench through the hole in the frame and then just put a socket on those nuts and then just go ahead and remove them. All right, so we're in the process of we're rolling the tank forward and we want to get to this point where it's going to give you access to the, uh, the vent lines and the fuel lines on both sides. There's a supply and a return on the left and then there's a vent on the right. So go ahead and disconnect those. And then you're also going to disconnect the uh, the wiring to the uh, fuel center. That's one's a crown, I believe, and the other one is for the uh, fuel level indicator. So go ahead and remove those. And then once we have those off, we'll be able to move the muffler out of the way and drop the tank down from the left to the right. All right, so the tank's out. We have it up on a set of saw horses. And honestly, uh, it's not that bad of a job. Um, I've actually had this tank out before. To replace the uh, the fuel lines when I first got the car, they were rotted out and they were leaking. So I have had this uh, tank out before, so pretty much know what the process is. And honestly, it goes a lot easier if you have two sets of hands, mainly to uh, pull the mufflers apart while you're below there trying to uh, uh, drop the tank down. So, but anyway, we got the uh, the tank here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the existing uh, sending unit and inspect the tank and go from there and see how uh, the tank looks inside. Uh, for the most part, the tank is pretty clean. I think the tank was actually replaced at some point before I bought the car because, um, you know, the condition of it actually looks pretty good. Okay, so the sending unit is just held on by a bunch of 7 16 bolts. So we're going to go ahead and remove those. This tank, for the most part, is already uh, empty. I drained it before we took it out of the car. All right, so now with all the bolts removed, we wanna go ahead and <clears throat> separate the sending unit from the tank. And you wanna use something plastic because, you know, you don't want to have any type of sparking issue. So we're just going to go around and quickly pry it up. Because again, even though the tank is empty, it's still full of vapors. And fuel vapors are more dangerous than the actual fuel. The vapors is what ignites. So you always want to be careful. Make sure you're not using any Tools that are gonna have any type of spark or anything like that. So there's the old sending unit. 
with these tanks, uh, they're actually they're lined with a bladder. And depending on how good of a condition the tank is, sometimes the bladder will actually uh, pull away from the tank. So I've been looking at it, and for the most part, there are a couple ripples in it. But on the bottom and the sides, uh, the, the bladder is still pretty much attached to the tank. So I'm not going to bother taking it out. But what we're going to do is, um, with the kit from Holly, they actually supply you with a new gasket, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to cut the uh, the upper part of this gasket out and then we'll put the new gasket in from Holly. And then we're also going to clean out the tank because there's a bunch of debris in there that it's going to cut, it's got to come out anyway. So we'll take the opportunity to clean it out now while we have it open. All right, so we're at the point where the tank is pretty much clean for the most part. So we went around with uh, some sandpaper and cleaned up that ceiling edge and then we hit it with scotch bright. And then once we did that, then we went ahead and cleaned the inside of the tank. And all we did was, uh, I just took a paintbrush and some paper towels and dried up a lot of the residue that was in the tank and basically kind of swept it in towards the center. And then we just grabbed some, uh, some painter's tape and just basically picked up the debris with the tape. And as you can tell, there was a lot of shit in there over 45 years or however long this tank has been there. So took the opportunity to clean it out now. And uh, so yeah, it's looking pretty good. Still a little bit of uh, debris in there. We'll go after that one last time, but for the most part, the tank, I'm pretty happy with it and uh, ready to start putting the, uh, the pump in. Okay, so as far as the fuel pump we're using, we're using the Holley Retrofit drop-in fuel pump for the 76 Corvette. This particular part number happens to be 12-312. So this fuel sending unit is pretty much everything that you need. It's got the pump that's already regulated at uh, 58 PSI, and it's at 255 liters per hour. It also comes with Hydromat, so that's going to uh, resolve any starvation issues in the tank that's actually not just a sock it's actually hydromat so basically the hydromat acts like a sponge so there is a, a uh, fuel uh, reservoir inside that mat and it's supposed to eliminate any starvation issues when the uh the tank gets low or going around the corner and then as far as the top end we got two really uh connections there is the uh that's the vent and basically that's the fuel supply. So it's a returnless system and it's pretty simple to do. All right, so as far as the gasket, there definitely is a uh, top and bottom on it. If you look at it or on this particular one, there's an O. So I'm only, I can only assume that means that's for the, it's for the outside. So if we throw it on there, it lines up with all the bolt holes in the tank. But if you flip it over like that, nothing lines up. So it only goes on one way. So we're gonna do that. So we know everything lines up. All right, so we got the fuel pump in there. And uh, what we did is to get the, uh, the bottom side of the, uh, the nuts attached, what we did is we just started on one side without the washer. And basically we were able to pull the bottom of the bladder up. And then what we did is we kind of worked our way around until everything was uh, tight. So now, per Holly, what they want you to do is tighten the uh, the bolts to 33 inch pounds. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Click. 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 All right, so at this point, I just want to test the fuel pump before we put it back in the car, make sure everything's good. And all I've, take, all I've done is I've taken the black and white, which goes to chassis ground. I've hooked it up to the ground of the, uh, the fuel sender. And then I've taken a black wire, just put a, uh, a uh, little connector on it. And that's going to battery ground. And then this is going to 12 volts applied. And all I'm going to do is just touch it to the uh, the battery, just to hear the pump. And 
that's all I want to hear. We know the pump's good. All right, so the installation of that pump is pretty straightforward. The hardest thing is getting the, the tank out of the car. And depending on your car, you may have a good time, you may have a bad time. It's part of the work on a project car, right? So at this point, the only thing we need to do is we, there's actually two things. We have to extend the harness from the pigtail that Holly provided us. We have to extend it towards the front of the car. And then the second thing is uh, we have to actually make the connection from the fuel pump to the existing uh, 5 sixteenths hard line that's already on the car. Um, I'm gonna reuse the, the hard line that's already there. Never had an issue with it. As far as I know, it doesn't leak. Um, so we're gonna run with it. So we're gonna order the EFI rated hose that's gonna basically make the connection from the tank to the hard line. And then we're gonna uh, purchase the uh, EFI hose clamps that uh, basically they crimp on, it's not a screw type. And we'll do that and basically we'll make that connection and then we'll get the tank back in the car and then we'll go to the next step. So like I said, the original uh, timeline for the having this car up and running is uh, April or May, probably gonna be closer to May at this point. But uh, again, the goal is to have this car up and running uh, by the time spring and summer gets here. So at this point, I think we're in pretty good shape because uh, again, uh, you know, getting the tank out is one of the, the bigger things to do other than get the engine in the, in the car. And once the pump, once the tank and the pump is wired up, basically at that point, it's just accessories and the, the wiring harness, power steering, uh, hoses, and a couple minor things, and then fans and whatever. So um, all that stuff is going to be relatively easy. Easy. <laughs> so you know, uh, we'll see. But uh, if there's any thoughts, questions, or concerns, go leave me a, a comment in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always. Thanks for watching and have a great day and I'll see you later.